Can I ask you, if there is a trade deal, is there still risk of recession because you might see an ongoing fight, but the fight will just evolve to more around technology, 5G? So this could go on, couldn't it, beyond what we're just talking about with this trade dispute? We don't know exactly where the best uses of technology will be and how it'll raise productivity, but it will turn out to do so. But we do know from the past that technology brings dislocation. If you reshore jobs to the United States, somebody's losing a job somewhere else in the world. Uh, if you're using new technologies in the United States, you may be putting out of work someone who's a lower skilled worker. We already have a fair amount of association between automation and technological change and trade in people's minds. And the, comp the, the inability to distinguish what's what is leading to uh, discontent with trade and with globalization that I think threatens, uh, more generally than the United States, threatens some fragmentation in the global economy. So this is a, the technological change is very likely to be beneficial over time, but it does bring dislocation. It brings uncertainty. It brings uncertainty about the future of work, especially for lower skilled uh, workers and so on. So I think it, one has to view that, at least in the short run, as something that could be uh, uh, problematic. I think if I may just respond to that, we have heard that argument since the 70s when robots were introduced to the automotive industry and people will said there will be no employment anymore in the automotive industry, it will be just robots. Fact is today we have the highest level of employment that we have ever had. When we look at reality at the moment, we are facing labor scarcity in quite some parts of the world. Go to the US at the moment, go in one of our factories and try to hire a blue collar worker. It's not so easy because there's basically full employment. Go to the what I call the Eastern banana in China uh, and go along that. We have rising labor costs. Uh, we have uh, a real scarcity on the labor market. And I can tell you at the moment when we go in in China and help a customer with robotic solutions to free our labor, they immediately elevate this person to another job because I said I cannot have enough. In the US, we have here in, here in Davos, I met quite a couple of customers. They said, you need to come and help me because we need to free up work inside our company because we can't get it on the labor market anymore. I want to make one distinction, which is between advanced economies and emerging and developing countries. Mm -hmm. In the advanced economies, I think we have seen winners and losers. As one sees in capitalism and market economies when things change, we've seen winners and losers and discontent among the losers. We haven't really seen winners and losers in the emerging market and developing world because growth is so high that you have big winners and smaller winners. We've actually looked at the IMF. If you look at income distribution by decile, even the lowest 10% have gained. And in a country like Vietnam, for example, where it's growing at 7% year in and year out, if you lose a job, you'll find another job and it'll probably be a reasonably good paying job. Now in the United States, yes, the unemployment rate is at is at a low, but if you look by decile, you find that some people have lost a job mm -hmm. and they've found another job that's not as well paying. Mm -hmm. And it's that, the discontent that comes from that, which is a result somehow, we don't know exactly the combination between trade technology and perhaps yes. some other effects. So, so I, you know, I think in the long run, uh, the technology will bring many gains. The question is who, who gains? and how to deal with the fact that the, we've, we've long known economists have always favored free trade because the gains from trade are so large that you could compensate the losers and still have something left over. But in fact, we don't compensate the losers. And the fact that there's this discontent is changing our politics in the United States, in Europe. It may be, I, I fear that it's a preview of coming attractions for emerging market and developing countries that at some point the middle income trap uh, may become more a middle-income black hole.